Okay, so I spoke to Dr. Upton earlier tonight. He said Ms. Keys is a 27-year-old prima gravida at 41 weeks. Her cervix is one centimeter, 25% effaced, and minus three. Her first blood pressure in the clinic today was 141 over 88, but the repeat was normal. He wants to induce labor with misoprostol intravaginally. I think he wants 100 micrograms. Actually, Dr. Dean, I see the order says 25 micrograms misoprostol intravaginally. Oh. Right. It is 25 micrograms. Good catch, Dr. Fong. There are no other complications that I'm aware of, but I'll review her obstetric record and check back with the team. We'll need to keep an eye on her blood pressure. She could be developing preeclampsia. Janet, who's coming in for you? I'm handing Ms. Key's care off to Dana Collins, so I'll make sure to mention your concern for her potential to develop preeclampsia. Hi, Janet. How are things looking tonight? Hi, Dana. I am late to pick up my kids at the center, so I need to make this quick. Doctors Dean Fahm and I just had team huddle on Ms. Keys. She is a 27-year-old prima gravida who's had an uneventful pregnancy. She's just been admitted for induction at 41 weeks with an unfavorable cervix. Poor thing has been waiting for a bed since early this afternoon and just got admitted. That long, huh? Yeah. She's stable right now. Dr. Upton's the attending. Doctors Dean and Fahm are on service for her tonight. The plans to induce by 25 micrograms of misoprostol intravaginally. Oh, and there's something you need to be aware of. Her blood pressure was elevated in the clinic, but they're high normal here, so we just need to keep an eye on it. We're doing a stat section in room 15, and I need your help moving the patient oh, to the oh, OR. Okay, I'll be right there. So I'll keep an eye on the pressures. It looks like I gotta run. Okay, bye. Dr. Fahm, um, could you please come here now? She's having some painful contractions, and I'm concerned about some late decelerations on the fetal heart rate tracing. She's at six, Dr. Dean. I think we should call Dr. Arthur. It's early yet. I think we can manage this without him. Dr. Dean, I'm concerned about Ms. Keys. I I'm uncomfortable watching these late decelerations, the baby's heart rates in the 60s. I mean, I just don't think it's safe to continue labor. Okay, Dana. Let's page Dr. Upton. Okay, she currently only has intermittent late decelerations, and these have improved with her position changes and supplemental oxygen. We'll monitor her until she's fully dilated and allow her to push. If there's any evidence of fetal distress or persistent late decelerations, we should be prepared to go to C-section. I've alerted the OR to be prepared in case we need to use it. Great. I'll discuss this plan with Mrs. Keys when we're done here. What are her vitals right now? Normal. Just checked 15 minutes ago. She's had no late deceleration since you recall. Okay, let's continue to monitor her. I need to know when she's complete and pushing so we can keep a close eye on her second stage. Any questions? Hey folks, we're going to do a C-section on Mrs. Keys because of persistent late decelerations which have temporarily improved. Mrs. Keys is a 27-year-old prima gravida at 41 weeks. Grant, do you have anything to add? No additional anesthesia risk. I'm loading her right now with 10 cc's of 2% lidocaine. She's almost ready for surgical incision. Lynn, is Pige on standby? Pige has been called. They're on their way. I've alerted Linda, the charge nurse, tonight. Can we do our surgical timeout now? Go for it. We have Michelle Keys, ID number 4562-3901. She's consented for a cesarean due to a non-reassuring fetal heart rate tracing. Lynn, we do have a Michelle Keys, ID 4562-3901 for C-section. Mrs. Keys, as a part of our safety check, please tell me why you're here. I'm here for C-section. Thank you, Mrs. Keys. We're going to take good care of you. Great job, everyone. Can we discuss how things went today with Mrs. Keys? What did we do well, and what can we do better next time? It was helpful for me to be brought in early. That allowed me to use a regional instead of a general anesthesia. You're right, Grant. Lynn, what did you think? It was great that Dr. Dean helped put the Foley in place while I did the count with Alicia. Albert, this is a great example of task assistance. How was our communication today? Excellent.